How's it going? My name is Steven Christian. I'm a medical student. I'm a STEM educator and I'm a visual artist. So hey, many of you know that I make a lot of quirky comics for web and newspapers and Instagram. And so what I decided to do is I decided to make another course, a part two of my socially conscious course called Quirky Comics. And so in this course, we're going to learn how to create a quirky comic for newspapers and the web and you will create a comic with a quirky joke that you can publish in newspapers, on Instagram, and other web platforms. And so it's a great opportunity to uh, tap into your quirky side and uh, create some art and some work and tell stories that are very impactful for people that, you know, want a slice of life joke and funny to escape from the world. So you can find more information at stuckonisland.com slash courses and it'll be available on Skillshare. Before we get started with the tutorial, I just wanna let you know about some things. As you know, I make a lot of this stuff available for free so that you can learn and level up your skill set, you know, at a very low cost. But there are ways for you to support me. First and foremost, I'm on Skillshare. And so go to Skillshare.com slash stuck on an island and follow me and check out some of my courses that I have there. I have all the courses you see on my YouTube channel and many more. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash illtopia. Here you could have subscriptions that are monthly or yearly and you get access to my Discord group and a lot of sneak peeks of things that are coming out soon from comics to new courses. You have a variety of tiers and stuff that you could support, so definitely check it out. You could go to shop.illtopia.com and it'll take you to this wonderful page that allows you to check out all my books, coloring books, augmented reality experiences, plushies, toys, and many more. This allows you to support my work and any of the stuff that I produce and put out there. All the proceeds go to funding all these projects that I release out for free on the internet, as well as paying for medical school. Because as you know, I'm a medical student as well. Last but not least, follow me on all the social nets. So in this section of the video, we're gonna be talking about our script. And so previously I used to work in Microsoft Word, but I started using OneNote, Microsoft OneNote, that allows you to make different pages within an actual notebook. So I actually have a notebook that has all my A Moment in Neotopia comic strips. And if you're familiar with my webcomic, Island Fever, you'll see that I have a lot of chapters here for that one as well. But for this, this has all my old ones. So if you're familiar with the comic strip or the webcomic, you'll see all the different scripts that I have for these. And I have a new one right here. If you wanna make a new one, you can go ahead and just click add page and it adds a new page here. And then you could enable it, test, comic. And then it changes the title right here. So if you have relevant titles, uh, this allows you to essentially have a lot of uh, organizational stuff added to your workflow. And so instead of having multiple documents and stuff like that, I'm able to go ahead and add these to it and navigate it pretty fairly. So uh, with our script, uh, I have a script here or an idea of a script. So with this, I wanted to go through and say, okay, what is something lighthearted that happens essentially in my life or that I find very, very funny. So my girlfriend, she tends to call animals the way they sound rather than what their actual names are. And so we have this conversation about why she does that. And I just thought it was very funny. So then I decided to make a comic out of it and incorporate my two characters, Roscoe and TJ, and actually see what happens in that conversation. And so again, if you're familiar with the character building that I did in my last course, which is socially conscious comics, we're sort of going to pick up from there in terms of what the process is. So if you're unfamiliar, definitely go check out that course. And then we could come back to this one. 
But essentially, the comic says, you know, look at the moon. So what we'll say is that Roscoe and TJ, and we'll start to flesh these out now. And we'll use a different formatting system. There we go. So I'll go through and reformat this because I copied this from a different software. So to get organized, I'll say Roscoe and TJ points for Roscoe and TJ are standing and talking. Roscoe points towards the left or towards the right. Hey, look at that moo. Or look at that. It's a moo. TJ responds puzzled. A moo? What's a moo? Roscoe replies that thing over there. And so if we're thinking about panels, we could say that this is panel one. So all that happens, they're standing, Roscoe points over to the right, hey look at that, it's a moo. TJ responds puzzled, a moo? What's a moo? Roscoe replies, that thing over there. And then we'll say in panel two, a cow is grazing a pasture and looks dumb founded. Moo! Then we could say panel three. Say TJ looks confused. What? Dummy, that's a cow. Roscoe replies. with disbelief and shock. A cow? Psst, that's not a cow. Or a cow? Psst, that's not its name. Every time I ask for its name, it says moo. So I call it moo. Out of respect. TJ responds with his hand over his. over his face. That is by far the dumbest thing I've heard all day from you. And 
then Roscoe is irritated. Whatever, fool. It says moo. Whatever, fool. It says moo. I call it moo. So it's a moo. That's that. And so for this, again, I need to put in the panels. So we'll say that we have panel one, panel two, panel three. Panel four. And we'll say that this panel so continues out of respect. Okay, and so we have it. It looks like we have our five panel comic. So now we're going to convert our comic script into a comic strip. So here we go. And so the activity that we have for this is we're going to write a script. And so write a script based on a funny interaction or life experience that you've had. Include characters having dialogue about a quirky topic, or you could come up with a quirky situation based on a comical event you had in your life. Feel free to limit the details to just dialogue in your script if you want to give yourself more wiggle room to craft out the visuals in the comic making process later on down the road. Okay, so with this section, with this lesson, we're actually going to take our base comic strip that we have our template and we're just going to de-strip it down and then we're going to start to build on it. And so typically I'll have a script and then I will just delete all of the text on it. I'll delete the bubbles. And I'll delete, I'll typically keep all of this on it, all the artwork. But what I'll do is I'll actually make everything from the ground up. So I will go through and actually delete all the pre-made characters and I will build everything from scratch. And what I'll do is I'll save it. So as you can see, I have a moment in Utopia and then we have the five panels that we're going to be building our experience off of. And so if you have a Windows computer, what I like to do is I like to essentially have the script as a split screen. And this split screen allows me to look at both at the same time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start adding our script text to our actual panels. So I'll just get the text tool. I'll click the text 
layer right here, which has our, all our text on it. And I'll start copying and pasting the text. So I'll copy the text from OneNote, and then I'll just drag to make a box, and then I'll paste that text right there. And that is typically the process. And so I'm gonna go through and uh, add all the text for each one of the panels in here as well. And if there's any typos, make sure to fix the typos before you add them to Photoshop or any photo editing software because you won't be able to, it won't automatically recognize them. And also make sure not to just click the text and then add it to it. It makes it difficult to edit the text prior to that. So what you do is just make sure you have a speech box or a box of text and then you can modify it like that. If I would have done it the other way, notice how there's no speech box. And so if I want to modify the text, I won't be able to stretch it and, and make it smaller like I can with this one. So see how I can edit this text like that after the fact? You can't do that with this. Uh, what you see is what you get with this. And so I tend to tell people not to do that and actually create boxes. Because if you try to create a box, all it does is just make it bigger or smaller. Like that. So we'll go ahead and delete this. And we'll stick with our speech bubbles like this. So again, and just copy and paste all our stuff. So over three speech bubbles here, and we'll say that like Roscoe is talking. Roscoe's always on the left, or Roscoe's always on the right. So we'll say that Roscoe's on the the right, and TJ is on the left. So we could always change the orientation of stuff later, but just to get it all sort of blocked out. And so then we'll have this here. Beauties is being able to change stuff when you need to. And then 
I didn't get to it. So now that we have our text, we have it laid out in a way that works for us. And so we'll just give it a give it one pass. It's like, hey, look at that. It's a moo. A moo? What's a moo? That thing over there. Moo. What? Dummy, that's a cow. A cow? Psst. That's not his name. Oh, look it. I forgot to capitalize that. And that's why we go over it. No. Okay, so we'll go back. A cow? Psst. That's not a cow. Psst. That's not its name. Every time I ask for its name, it says Moo. So I call it Moo. Now add you know at the end, just because it's more conversational. Out of respect, you know? Then I'll add, no, I don't know. There you go. So, no, I don't know. That is by far the dumbest thing I've heard all day from you. Whatever, fool. It says moo. I call it moo. I'll just have these be separate lines. So, it says moo. I call it moo. So it's a moo. That's that. And so now that we have that done, we'll go ahead and save it. In this activity, what we're going to do is we're going to start adding text. And so based on your script, Add text to the panels of your comic. This can be placeholder text to start, as you can format it later. Focus more on adding the text so that it fits nicely within the panels. Play around with the size of the text, the spacing between the text blocks, and the font to see what fits the theme and the vibe of the comic you're creating. Again, this is more about prototyping rather than having a final version of the text as this may change after you added the art and the speech bubbles. So now what we can do is we can start adding our bubbles to the whole thing. But yeah, let's go ahead and add these bubbles first. Usually I want a sketch, but we could add the sketch after we add the bubble so that we know what we're sort of dealing with. So we'll add the bubbles, and so we'll go through. We're going to get a rounded rectangle. I tend to have the stroke be around five, and the background is obviously a white, and we'll just start placing our bubbles there.
And I try to do that based on the conversation pathway. So it's like, this is said first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, or fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. And so what I'll do is I'll sort of go based off of that order. And again, you want to make sure you have enough space, especially because we'll probably be adding some uh, bolding of the text and, and modifying the text in very specific ways. And so if you don't want to have to modify the speech bubbles later, you just give it enough room early on. Just like that. And so now I have an idea of where the characters are going to be at. And so it's like TJ is typically right here. Roscoe is right here. And so what we'll do is I'll just have those be the same spots. And then I'll fit the designs based off of those. So you don't have to always have the characters there. You could actually place the characters in an imaginary spot and then place the bubbles and the word balloons there and then fit the design around that. So that's what we'll actually do. So again, I tend to start much like I did the beginning of the conversation uh, is gonna be the first bubble. For this one, the end of the conversation will essentially be my first speech bubble tail. And so we say that this is the next one that's being said. And we'll say this. And this. And since I'm connecting this, I'll actually just make a box going in between both of those. So now what we can do, and I'll go ahead and make this full screen, is in the layers panel, you'll be able to select the different layers. So you'll notice that shape one is right next to rectangle nine. That is done by design. So all I have to do is click this and right click merge shape. And now we have one speech bubble there. So the reason I do the top ones with the speech bubbles first and then the tails last is because I'm able to click, click, and they're right next to each other. I click merge shape and it makes things easier. So now I can just go down this hierarchy and just repeat all those steps. When it comes to this one right here, this one gets interesting because I have to click the rounded rectangle, one and three. Then I choose shape seven and I choose shape nine and I merge those. So now it makes that one. And then shape eight and rounded rectangle two. I'll create that shape and voila, we have them all. And that is how we add our speech bubbles again. In this activity, we're going to be adding speech bubbles now. And so add speech bubbles around your text. Feel free to get creative with what shapes the bubbles are and how thick the border lines are. Be sure to give your text enough space within the speech bubble so that the text doesn't bleed within the outline. Remember, you can always tweak it later. So now 
it's time to add a new layer and this is what we're going to do for our sketch. So for our sketch, we'll add a new group and we'll lower this below the bubbles group. We'll case sketch. And then we'll add a layer there. And this layer, we'll go ahead and have 70%. And it's time for us to actually do our sketching. And so with this, we'll go ahead and bring back our panel dialog for our script. And we'll just give ourselves a little more room. And so we know, based off of our script, and this is why the script matters, we have an idea of what we're going to be creating already. And so with any drawing or anything like that, we could go ahead and do that. And so we could say, okay, the first panel, we have Roscoe and TJ standing and talking, and Roscoe points towards the right. And so with it, we'll go ahead and grab a brush. Want to make sure that the brush, I, I tend to have sort of like a pencil brush or anything. You could always choose whatever you want. Now I'll turn it to black. Now I have some pressure, some opacity, add that to it. And here we go. So zooming in to give me a little more room to work with, I could say, okay, TJ is looking puzzled and Roscoe is pointing. So with Roscoe, we could go through and say, Like that. So we got Roscoe and he's pointing. And then we'll have TJ. And TJ is looking kind of puzzled. And you could stretch your imagination a little bit when you're doing these designs. Because TJ has, he has glasses on, but he sort of has this expression with his glasses rather than his eyes. Because his eyes are obviously covered.
So that is the first one. Roscoe is pointing. Let me give you. Roscoe is pointing, and TJ is puzzled. So now with this one, we have a cow grazing and looking dumbfounded. So we could make sort of a pasture of grass. And we got our cow sort of in the pasture saying moo. We can give some more. Save it. And so now TJ looks confused. And so confusion will sort of have his hand out. And then we'll have him sort of scratching his head. And then Roscoe replies with disbelief and shock.
And so now we got panel three done. Disbelief and shock. So Roscoe continues and says, out of respect. And then TJ has his hand over his face and he's sort of just in disbelief. And then we'll say that this image will be the same as this image right here. So what I could do is I could actually just copy it or yeah, I'll just go through, copy the image, boom, copy layer. Move over to the side and then for Roscoe, he is irritated. So he's going to be irritated. So he's going to have his hands crossed. And we have our sketch. So what we could do now is we'll go ahead, say the sketch layer is done, then I'll just go ahead and just create a final draft. So final work. 
and we'll create a new one. And from there, we won't need our script anymore. We should be done. And it's time to go through and lower the opacity just a bit and start inking our final drawing. So here we go. In this activity, we're looking at sketching our line art. And so sketch the ideas of each panel of your comic based on the script that you wrote. The more details, the more you can follow. The less details, the more creative and expressive you can make your art. Since this is a quirky comic, this can be loose and expressive to really sell the story you're trying to tell. Try to push the facial expressions and gestures as far as possible. Even if it is two characters talking, you can give each character some extra character with your line work. So with this, we're going to, I'm going to get a hard brush. So a hard round brush, I'll say a, a custom ink brush is probably, yeah, custom ink brush works for me. And so lower it, lower it to 10. Gives me some good variation. Then I will zoom in because this allows me to get enough of the details in there. And then I'll start working on this right now.
Okay, so we have our comic strip now. And so what we can do is we can get rid of the sketch and we can add our effects to it now. In this activity, it's all about inking the art. Inking is a great way to make your art stand out in a comic because it's all visually based. You can simply kick back and trace all the sketch lines you want to keep, or you can use the ink to add even more details to the panels of your comic. So what we'll do is we'll save it. And so with it, we can go through and we can add effects. So effects, we can say is something as simple as just modifying the text. So we could say the text can be uppercase and we'll add some boldness to it. So every time you say moo, the moo will be uppercase and it will be bold. That's something that's low hanging fruit, but it allows us to have a, a very large impact on the reading experience. So I'll just go through and add those to it. And with this one, we can go through and we can make that 11 instead of eight. So just increase the size, moo. And I'll do the same with all the other moves. Moo, moo. And you see how this is, this modifies our look. So like I said before, because we have enough space, I can actually work with that. So I can bold it, give it its own thing, and then we can go through and modify the whole that might be a little too much. There we go. uppercase and bold. I'll do that for the rest of my uppercase and bold. Uppercase. And so then we'll say that this can be uppercased and bolded as well, because he's sort of just making a final statement. That's that. And then we could say this can be uppercased, and this one could be bold italics then we could say this can be bold italics and we could uppercase it as well it's like what dummy that's a cow so we could uppercase that one and we could bold in it boom that's a cow. Then we 
navigate uppercase and fold in it as well. All the cows and all the moves, just like that. So now we have our final comic. Go through and save it. And so we say, hey, look at that. It's a moo. A moo? What's a moo? That thing over there. We can lower this just so it's sort of centered. That thing over there. Moo. What? Tell me that's a cow. A cow? Psst. That's not its name. Every time I ask it, every time I ask for its name, it says moo. So I call it moo. Out of respect, you know? No, I don't know. That is by far the dumbest thing I've heard all day from you. Whatever, fool. It says moo. I call it moo. So it's a moo. That's that. In this activity, it's all about text effects. And so we're going to add text effects to your comic if it needs them. You can enhance specific words in your comic by changing the color, the font, the size to make it stand out, and enhance the experience of the comic story. Feel free to read the text out loud in the voice of the characters to see what text you really want to make expressive. And that can make the difference right there. And that is our quirky comic. So all we need to do now is send it to our editor. So we'll go through, we will save it. So export, export as, as a JPEG. We export it as, and we call it, it's a move. And then from there, we'll send it to our editor, just like that. And so afterwards, I will show you guys how to export it for Instagram and other web platforms. Okay, so now that we have our comic strip sent off to our editor, one of the things that we can do is we can go through and we can add color to this and we can post this as a webcomic. And so for newspaper comics, typically I do those in black and white because they're easier to iterate and because the printing process might get messed up through that. But when we have the web, we have a flurry of different things that we can explore. And so we are definitely going to color the comic and then we're going to learn how to post it onto our Instagram and if we wanna do a website or stuff. So here we go. The first things first with our final work section right here, all we're gonna do is we're going to duplicate that. So we'll duplicate the group. So it says final work right here. And I'll just change it to final work panel. And then I'll hide the final work one that we have and I'll actually go ahead and convert it to a smart object. So right click and smart object. And so now if I hide it, it appears just like that. So turn it on and off and that works. So now what we can do is I'm gonna go through and I'm going to separate all these panels from the artwork. And from there, I will go ahead and add that to all the panels that I have right now. So 
I can go through, grab my rectangular marquee tool, or you could press M, and I'll go over to panel one. I'll just hover around all the blacks or all the white space, and then I'll right click and I'll layer via copy. And you'll see it creates layer four here. So if I turn it off, you'll see layer four exists. And since this is our panel one, what I can do is I can turn this into panel one. So I will go ahead and take layer four and I will place that within the panel one folder right there. So when I turn off the folder, it turns off the frame, the panel frame, and also the artwork. And so what I'll do now is I will go ahead and make all the different layers or all the different panels different layers. And so I'll just go ahead and turn on final work panel. I will use the marquee selection tool, the rectangular marquee tool, and I will go ahead and just copy that layer. So the first thing you need to remember, because I almost messed up, is you need to make sure that you have final work panel selected and then you right click and you copy. And then again, you click final work panel again, you do the marquee selection for panel three, then you right click, copy. And you'll do that for panel four, right click, copy and you'll do that for panel five the final panel you want to right click and copy so again this is only going to affect the artwork and not the actual text bubbles because they're on a different layer so all we're doing is we're separating our artwork layers into different panels layers and so if I turn off my final work panel layer, if I turn that off, you'll see that the original or the artwork layers are still there. And that's because they're on these individual layers now. And so what I did is uh, the reason I copied these things and then placed them, made different layers is to work non-destructively. And so if I want to make modifications to this panel, I can do that and then I can recopy the layers again and so with this one now it's time to place these all in the right panel groups so layer eight goes in panel five layer seven goes in panel four layer three or layer six goes in layer three and then finally layer five goes in layer or panel two. So now I have these all set up. Just like that. So we went ahead and separated our layers, which is great. So we can go ahead and save that. And we won't have to worry about the final work ones anymore. We could just place this back in here, but these are sort of our, our sketches and our final artwork layers. We, you could delete those, you could keep them as references, up to you. But now we'll go ahead and we'll start coloring our, our panels. So here we go. Okay, so now the next thing that we're going to do is actually set up our layers for coloring. So we can go and start adding a layer to each one of the things. So we'll go to add a layer right under our panel for layer one. So just go ahead, add a layer there, which is layer nine, and we'll just place that right under layer four. And so one of the things that's great about having the panels in these boxes here is that if we color outside of the panels, 
on that layer within the panel, it's not going to show up. And this is what I'll show you what I mean. So I have a red and I have a brush for it. And so if I try to color outside of it, nothing appears, which is great. So we like that. And it's going to come in handy when we try to do gradients and stuff. And so with it, let's go ahead. We'll zoom into our area. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab a color. And so I typically use a brown color for Roscoe and TJ. And what I can do is start coloring in there. So just start coloring in the lines. Like that. Like that. So I have the first color down. So now I can start adding the other colors. And I'll change it from multiply to actual normal so that I can give myself a little more room to work with. Now change the hair color. I typically use a like a greenish, like a very dark green brown. So that gives just a little more variation to the hair texture than just a regular black. So I try to do something that's really dark but not like actually black. It might appear black, but it's not. So now to start playing around with different colors for the other parts of the body. So let's say there's glasses or yellow or gold or however you want to call it. And then let's say that his lenses for glasses, like a blue, like that. So having these done allows me to circle back with them a lot easier in the future. So it's like if I want to change the color, if I want to make a new color or add additional colors to the characters or if I'm coloring another character within the same comic, I don't have to completely start from scratch. I could just use the paint bucket tool and go from there. So I think that's good for TJ. So now let's finish Roscoe.
Roscoe's mouth. Let this tongue be this color. Then has the rest of his mouth be a darker red. like that. So that is our first color panel. Not much, but it's just enough, I think. You know, just enough. So one additional thing that I'll do is probably add a little bit of this on it. And voila. So this is our this is our first panel. We colored it. We did it. We colored it. So now that we got that done, so we're just gonna repeat that process again. So time for our second panel. Boom. And so we'll say and we'll zoom in on this one. So for our second panel, we have our cows. So what we could do is we could say, we know the cows eat green grass. So we'll just turn this grass green. And we could say that this panel can be a multiply panel so that we still see our, our line work. And so then we'll say that the cows have a pink sort of nose and mouth. So cows have pink nose and mouth. And then we'll also say that the cows in the background, they sort of have a, they're just going to be gray. We're going to use the gray to show that there are cows in the background. Like this one. And this one. Because you could really use color to distinguish things more distinctly. And so what if we said we had a, a brown cow and we had a white cow? So we'll just go with that. Brown cow and white cow. just to give it a little more variation. Like that. So brown cow, white cow, and the white cow says moo. Just like that. So now it's time to move back over to our other ones. So again, make a new layer. This layer is in our panel three. So I'll just use the uh, eyedropper tool to snag a color that we want it. We'll change this layer to multiply and then We'll just start coloring. And with the multiply layer, as you can see, any black lines that are on the panels or anything else, they shine through the actual color. So what I did earlier in the first panel, I didn't have to actually erase any of the, of the things that hit the panels on the side. All I had to do was just change it to the multiply layer. So. With all these, you always forget sometimes there's a lot of things that you can try and there's a lot of tools that, and stuff that you can approach. 
but um, the beauty of working digitally for comics is that you're able to make modifications and changes without taking too much time. That's really, really fun. And so with these simple characters, all you have to do is just fill in the lines for the most part. Like it's fairly, it's fairly, I would say it's fairly simple. Really the defining thing is how consistent you are with your workflow. I create my characters very simply so that I'm able to have a very consistent workflow. Like I streamline my process very, very consistently. And because of that, I feel like I can be the most creative because if I want to tweak some rules, I can, but if I want to just focus on a particular part of the creative process, I could do that as well. And for me, having a consistent color palette as well, that really makes things easy because I don't have to play around with colors too much, as you can see here where both of my characters are very similar in skin texture and tone. And so I'm choosing between a whole bunch of different colors, but these colors are very consistent. So if anything, I'm just reusing the same colors. And for the most part, that just allows me to continue creating without spending too much time thinking about things. Less time thinking, more time creating. And like that, panel three is done. So we have two more panels, just like that. We're moving along fairly nicely. So next thing that we need to do, add another layer, but this time in panel four. So now we just go through, start doing the same process we were doing before. And you'll notice that the white, the black isn't showing up behind the color. And that is because we need to put in our multiply. And now we can see it better. Okay, 
Now it's time to do Roscoe again. Panel four is done. Now time for panel five. So again, we'll go through, add our color there, or add our layer, my fault, add our layer. And so now we'll just go ahead and recolor the things again. Let's not forget to turn list to multiply.
Okay, so we have the base colors for our webcomic right there. And so now, go ahead and save it. And so if we look at it, one of the things that stands out to me is this little angry symbol here. And so in panel five, there's an angry symbol that we can utilize and we can make it a different color, make it stand out because you can really, you can't really see it right now. And so what you could do is say we want to change this to a red to really show his anger. We can do that by creating a new layer. And from there, we can right click it and create clipping mask. And so now anything that we play, anything that we have on this layer will show up on the line work, which is our line work layer that we're on layer eight. And so what we'll do is we can change that to a red and then we could actually change the color of our line without changing any of the other parts of it. So now we have a red angry symbol, just like that. Very easy to implement, just a couple of clicks and a couple of strokes and even a color change, just like that. Very, very nice. In this activity, it's all about coloring. Coloring a comic is a great way to give your comic a fresh makeover. Color can do a lot to really enhance the visuals and make different elements stand out. And so find a good color palette, a brush, and spice up your comic with bold and vivid colors. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually going to add a gradient. And we're gonna add a gradient background for our background here. So what we'll do is we'll actually grab a new layer. So create a new layer. We'll just enable it background. And then from there, we'll select our gradient tool right here. And I'll actually double click it and we'll say, huh, I want to have something that is blue, I want some greens, I'm going to move these around a little bit. And if you want to create a new one, you just go ahead and you click in the space and it'll create a new one. And I'll say we'll have some more, we'll actually change the position of this one with this one so that it's blue, green, blue, purple, like that. So if we have four, we'll say that this one is around 35. This one will be around 70 and that works like that so now we'll go ahead we'll go in an angle and notice how it goes behind our stuff we want we don't want it to go behind we want it to stay in front or at least go behind the characters but stay in all of our whatchamacallit like stay within our panels and it's just not inside the panels yet. And so what we're actually going to have to do is we're going to have to place this inside of our panels. So what we can do is we can just duplicate, make a copy, and we'll just drag it inside of our panel. And we can do it again. We can duplicate and drag it inside the panel. Duplicate again, drag it inside our panel, duplicate again, drag it inside our panel. And last but not least, we could duplicate again, or we could just drag the last one inside the panel, like that. And this looks very, very messy. This looks very bad. So what we can do now is we'll take our background layer and we'll place that 
in beat right under our art layer. And we'll continue to do that for all of them. Like so. And one of the things that we see, essentially because we have our layers on multiply, the colors in the background are messing up the colors in our actual comic. And so because of that, all we have to do is go through and change the gradient above it. And this is pretty simple. It's tedious work, but it's pretty simple to implement. And so I'll take you all through it right now. Now that our stuff is separated, we can actually turn this into a, a web comic. And a way that I like to do this is first I'll save this. And once it's saved, I will actually extract all of these out as individual comic strips. And this is a process that is actually very, very easy to do. And so what I'll do is I'll extract out all of these as different comic strips in a couple of quick motions. Okay, so for each one of these, I could go through and I can create a smart object for it. So I could do the title, select all the layers for the title, which are the top ones, right click, convert to smart object, and voila, we have our smart, smart object right here. And what I'll actually, what I'll do is I'll actually save this as a new thing, and we'll call this web comic. There we go. And so now I could turn all of these panels into smart objects by just right clicking, convert to smart object, convert to smart object, convert to smart object, convert to smart object, and convert to smart object. So now we have all of our panels and smart objects. And so what I could do now is I can actually hide or lock my background layer and we could essentially select all the different assets that we have. We could convert this to a smart object as well. So selecting all the assets, so just dragging in, dragging a square around panel one, see uh, how it selects panel one, and then it selects all the shape and text layers within our bubbles. We don't have to worry about the organization as much now because we're getting ready to publish this to a webcomic on Instagram. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and right click on these layers and we're gonna convert these to smart objects, just like that. And so we could rename this panel one. And then we'll just have this right below our A Moment in Illtopia, just like that. And so now we could go ahead and do the same thing for panel two. So panel two, we'll right click one of the layers, convert to smart object, and then we'll rename it panel two. So if we deselect panel two, it deselects everything. If we deselect panel one, deselects everything. So now do this for panel three. Right click, convert to smart object, put it under panel two, and we'll name it panel three. And then we'll do the same for the last two. So right click, convert to smart object, A panel four. Last but not least, 
See how it selects all of those on the right? I'll show that again. It selects all the layers that are left. Right click, convert to smart object. Put that below panel four, we'll do panel five. So now there's nothing in our text layers and all of our layers are contained within our smart object. So if you go inside the smart object, you'll notice how all of our layers are here. The text and the speech bubble and our smart object that actually has our panel five. And so we can go inside that layer and what do you know? Here's the whole layer that we have of our panel. And that's how smart objects work. They're essentially many documents within other documents. And so now I can go through and we could create a new template essentially. And so we'll go to new. We could say that we want a 1080 by 1080 square, 300 pixels per inch or 300 DPI. And we can create that. And so now this is pretty much our canvas that works for Instagram. And so what we can do is we can take all of our panels, a moment in Utopia, panel one, two, three, four, and five, and we could actually drag and drop them over to the other one, like that. And so you notice how all of these look, everything looks sort of the same. It's layered and anchored the same, but we want these to all be sort of overlaid. And so what we can do is we could go up here to our transform tools and we could have, click the three dots and we could say to canvas, we want to align to canvas. So we'll do that. And then we want to align center. So when we click horizontal center, all these should line up in a row or a column. It should line up in a column. So watch what happens. They lined up in a column. So now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to align vertically. And so these should all line up and stack on each other with one click. And so because they're all individual layers, they will all stack up at the same center point. And because they're all the same size, they will all have the same center point. So when we click this, watch what happens. Boom. Just like that. And so now all we have to do is just resize this until we can hold alt and by holding alt, we can resize this to an adequate size that works for us. So give it a little bit of a border, boom. And then we click okay. And now we have all our different comics in one place. The last thing that we need to do is go through and export all these out. So I'll go ahead and save this as like a moo web comic panels like that. And again, these are all smart objects. So we could go through and we could double click these and it's the same smart objects that were in here, which is great. So now we'll go ahead, we'll click export, export as, and we'll just go PNG or we'll go JPEG. And then we'll say like a moo web comic panel title. Then we hide that one. We open up this one, do the same thing. So we'll export as, and we'll name this panel one. We'll name it panel zero one. Makes it easier to 
fine. Then we'll export as for the second panel. And we'll name this one 02. Third panel. Export as. Zero three. Again, panel will export as for panel four. Panel four. And last but not least, we have panel five. And we'll export that as. Panel five, just like that. Just like that, we have our comics. And actually we could go back with our color comic and we could export that one as well. So we'll export this one as, as a JPEG and we'll say, It's a moo comic colored. And so now you'll see that in this course, we went over how to make a comic, how to color it, and then how to export each of the individual panels. And now we could post it on our Instagram. We could post it on anything that we want. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to upload this to our Instagram account. So one of the things that I like to do, because I have a Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and I have a Windows computer and it syncs wirelessly. So a lot of the stuff that I can do on Instagram, I can actually post it from my computer to my Instagram. And I'll show you how I do that. So I have my Your Phone application on and so you could go and you could just type in your phone and it's the your phone app that syncs with Android and uh, Windows. I could go to my apps and I could actually remote connect to them and I could click on to Instagram. So it's trying to connect to my computer. My computer is trying to connect to my phone and what do you know? I have my Instagram here. I will actually open up my files, my files, and then I'll go SD card. I can create a new folder and we'll say like a, or we'll call it, it's a move. So we'll go through with our, your phone open. We'll go to my files. And then from my files, go to that SD card. And then it's a move. And we can drag and drop. Transferring those files right now. So if that doesn't work, which it seems like it's not working right now, unfortunately, what you can do is you could just connect your phone and by connecting your phone, you have the opportunity to just copy and paste these two. Your actual hard drive. And so I'll do that. I'll just find the card, find it's a move, and I will just paste these into that. Just like that. Very simple. 
And so now you'll see it's on my, my card here. And so now what I can do is I could go back. I can go to my Instagram and notice how these are here now. It's great. It looks like I accidentally copied a couple of them more than I actually needed to, unfortunately. So for that, I could click that one and then I could select the multiple ones. So with that, I want to make sure to choose the right one. So, hey, look, it's a moo. And then he's pointing to this one. And then we go to this one. What, dummy? That's a cow. And then we move to that one. And then we have our last one. Just like that. And again, we're just doing this all from my phone. So we could click next. And then we could look at making sure that all of them are right. Look at it, moo, boom. What a dummy, that's a cow. I don't know, out of respect. It's a moo, whatever, foo. From there, then we do the captions. We'll say, look, it's a moo. And we'll do hashtag Giltopia. Hashtag web comics. Hashtag funny. Just like that. And from there, you click post, click. It finishes up. As you can see here, once it's finished, voila. It is live. So if you go to my Instagram, you click on it and it is live. And that is how you turn a quirky webcomic into an Instagram post. Okay, so thank you for joining me for this extra special course. Again, this was a this was part two of my newspaper web comics course. And with this, again, we showed you how to create a comic strip, essentially like the one that I have in my A Moment in Iltopia, which I get published in the Willamette Weekly every week. And from there, we actually found a way to color our comic strip turn that into a webcomic by extracting out all the panels, giving some more life to it, and then posting it on the Instagram. And so not only do you have a, in your repertoire, the ability to make a comic strip for a newspaper, but you can actually turn that into a digital version of that, that you could share not only in print, but on the social platforms that we all love. And so again, my name is Stephen Christian. I thank you for joining me on this lovely journey to explore creative tools. And I really hope that you all continue to explore and create yourselves some wonderful memories because that's what this is all about. It's about creating, it's about sharing, it's about sharing your messages and, and having fun. And so I'm glad that I was able to share a lot of the work that I'm doing and the techniques that I use in my everyday work and hopefully you can iterate and build on those things as well. And so if you are looking to learn more, check out my other courses, especially if you're interested in some augmented reality stuff, which will be coming down the pipeline very, very soon. And so the third part of this, part number three, is gonna be turning this webcomic into an augmented reality experience. And I'm excited to share, the, uh, excited to share that with y'all. Again, go out into the world, create amazing stuff, conquer the problems that you're dealing with, and hope to see you on the next 
session, and project. Adios.